rapid construction at a deadly cost, Insider exposes fatal flaws in China's expressway expansion. CCP's century-long deception, is Putin the biggest victim? U.S. Department of Justice charges over 50 individuals to counter CCP's transnational repression. Ukrainian president's term nears end. Kiev, Russia weaponizes TikTok. Sino-French summit exposes deep divides and rising tensions in China-EU relations. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Rapid construction at a deadly cost, Insider exposes fatal flaws in China's expressway expansion. A mainland self-media person recorded a video stating, the root of the major accident on the Meilong Expressway lies in the CCP's Great Leap Forward-style expressway construction. He said, China's expressway mileage is nearly 180,000 kilometers, which is more than four times the circumference of the Earth and ranks first in the world. He compared, while it took the U.S. 80 years to build 100,000 kilometers of highways from its first highway, we took only 12 years from our first Shanghai Jiaxing Expressway. What the U.S. achieved in 80 years, we accomplished in 12. On average, it took Germany 90 years per 10,000 kilometers, while it took us only one and a half years. The self-media person stated, the price of speed is quality, and the cost of quality is our lives. He pointed out that assigning blame is not the most urgent issue right now. The most urgent matter is, all civil servants, state-owned and private enterprises involved in highway construction must work overtime on May Day for 100 consecutive days to thoroughly inspect all 170,000 kilometers of highways nationwide, especially the 100,000 kilometers built between 2010 and 2020. This includes checking every culvert, every pier, every piece of concrete and asphalt, because during the May Day period there are still tens of millions of cars speeding on these 170,000 kilometers of highways, and we simply cannot afford another Maylong Expressway accident. On May 6, netizens revealed the shady dealings behind the May Day Expressway, stating that similar projects in China are almost always operated in this manner. The Meilong Expressway's investment was 2.1 billion yuan, approximately $290 million, with the directors' connected parties invited to bid. Through a collusive bidding game, the main contract was secured for 1.8 billion yuan, approximately $250 million, and 900 million yuan, around $125 million, was subcontracted out, leaving the construction company with only 800 million yuan around $110 million, for the project. What's the result? Shoddy construction is undoubtedly expected, as no infrastructure project is done otherwise, including the final inspection being passed. Nitizen Gancheng Wang said that corruption has not only been banned repeatedly, but has actually gotten worse. Lawyer Quan Zhang of Utopia believes, almost all state-owned projects follow this pattern. Netizen Wan Qing comments, saying, layer upon layer of corruption, a single road is greedily crossed, and a country with more corrupt officials will eventually collapse, sooner or later, won't it? CCP's century-long deception, is Putin the biggest victim? On May 6, Putin commanded the Russian military to conduct tactical nuclear weapons exercises, raising the stakes with nuclear threats towards various European nations. But why choose this specific day? Concurrently, Xi Jinping was meeting with French President Macron and Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, in a trilateral summit. This timing raises questions about the coordination between Russia and China and their underlying strategies. Today, we'll explore whether Russia is the greatest victim of the CCP's centennial change strategy and the broader implications of these actions. In recent days, Xi Jinping's visit to France has dominated global headlines but Putin's activities also deserve scrutiny. By ordering tactical nuclear weapons exercises, Putin seems to be signaling his readiness for escalated conflict. But is nuclear war truly on his agenda? On May 6, Putin activated missile units in the Navy in southern Russia for a nuclear drill close to Ukraine, focusing on tactical nuclear weapons. This move comes amidst claims that the exercise was a response to provocations by Western countries. However, this justification seems thin, given the timing and geopolitical context. 
The same day of the drill coincided with significant diplomatic engagements involving China and the EU, suggesting that Putin's true intent might be to leverage nuclear threats for political pressure, not actual warfare. Xi Jinping's recent European tour appears to be strategically timed. His goals seem multifaceted, selling China's mass-produced electric vehicles and technology to Europe, diffusing potential anti-dumping investigations, and using the guise of advocating for a ceasefire in Ukraine to ease the pressure of sanctions on Russia. More broadly, she aims to weaken EU unity and reduce European alignment with US strategies against China. Macron's inclination towards strategic autonomy echoes China's narrative, potentially easing the EU's stance against China. Putin's readiness to escalate nuclear posturing right before his visit to China in mid-May suggests a deeper collaboration aimed at reshaping global alliances and challenging Western dominance. This strategy, framed as promoting major global changes, remains largely secretive and speculative. It likely involves leveraging conflicts, like those in Ukraine and the Middle East, to exhaust Western resources, while positioning China and Russia as central players in a new global order. Was Putin deceived by the CCP? Putin may have been misled by the CCP as part of a broader strategy termed the Centennial Great Change, which appears to be a ploy to reposition global power dynamics, particularly against the West. Xi Jinping's coordination with Putin, including strategic nuclear exercises, seems aligned with this deceptive strategy aimed at weakening both NATO and the US while empowering China and Russia. This grand strategy includes various aggressive maneuvers by Russia, Iran, North Korea, and China, targeting different geopolitical areas to disperse and exhaust U.S. and European military resources. The so-called Centennial Great Change might better be described as the Centennial Grand Deception, where China manipulates its partners into actions that primarily serve Chinese interests at their expense. The CCP's approach involves using these countries as tools to weaken powerful adversaries, thereby facilitating China's rise to dominance. While the CCP does not wish for Russia's collapse, it benefits from a weakened Russia dependent on China, thereby converting it into a subservient ally. This aligns with the U.S. Secretary of State Blinken's accusations against China for covertly supporting Russia militarily. The culmination of these actions shows a weakened Russia, increasingly dependent on China, reducing it to a lesser partner or even a vassal state. Despite ambitious plans, the century-long deception faces significant hurdles. The CCP's efforts to divide Western alliances and promote internal EU discord through economic incentives have met resistance. Europe insists on fair trade practices and the U.S. has avoided overcommitment in conflict zones, circumventing potential traps set by China and Russia. Moreover, the increasing military collaboration between China and Russia, especially regarding Taiwan, signals possible preparation for dual-front confrontations. The ramifications of these strategies extend globally, potentially destabilizing international markets and inflating prices. Domestically, the Chinese populace bears the brunt, facing resource shortages as the government hoards strategic reserves. Internationally, the CCP's maneuverings could perpetuate economic uncertainty and inflation, impacting global recovery efforts. While the CCP and Russia attempt to realign global powers in their favor, their strategies involve high stakes and uncertain outcomes. The biggest immediate losers appear to be the ordinary citizens, particularly those in China who endure the consequences of their government's geopolitical ambitions. U.S. Department of Justice charges over 50 individuals to counter CCP's transnational repression. The CCP in countries like Iran have been intimidating, harassing, and even planning attacks on dissidents residing in the United States, drawing the attention of the U.S. Department of Justice. According to an Associated Press report on May 6, dozens of suspects were charged by the Justice Department between 2018 and 2024 for acts of transnational repression. Of these, over 50 individuals related to CCP's cross-border repression were prosecuted, and about eight were related to Iran. The report mentions an incident from 2022 when a Tiananmen Square incident student leader participated in a congressional race in New York prompting a CCP intelligence officer to immediately hire a private detective to dig up dirt on this Chinese candidate. 
the CCP agent even told his contact that he would resort to violence to stop him from running if necessary. Wang Ingwa, a former entrepreneur from Shenzhen, said that there are many cases of the CCP threatening dissidents abroad, and he himself is an example. Wang Ingwa said, I signed a two-year contract with the landlord. I hadn't lived there for two months when he suddenly wanted to evict me and then deliberately raised the rent. Originally, he often drank and ate at our home and we had a good relationship, but suddenly he wanted to evict me. After I left, he told me the truth, saying that the national security, the police in Shenzhen, and even the embassy and Los Angeles consulate had approached him, demanding that he evict me immediately or they would target him. In addition to active Chinese activists in the U.S., Chinese people who immigrate to the U.S. also face CCP's cross-border pressure. Hai Feng, a Chinese expatriate in the U.S., created four WeChat groups to discuss politics and assist immigrants, advising them on safety. Hai Feng said, In the group, some people didn't have money for medical treatment, and I said they could apply for a passport and go abroad where treatment is free. They, the police, accused me of human trafficking, assisting others in smuggling, and even of the crime of subverting the state power. My classmate warned me over the phone to be careful and not to return. The U.S. Department of Justice is increasingly focusing on the CCP's transnational suppression. In 2023, the Justice Department charged 36 CCP police officers who used social media to target dissidents within the U.S. and arrested two men who established CCP police stations in Manhattan's Chinatown. Exiled rights activist and scholar Liangji said, This is very significant. In a country like the United States, which guarantees the rule of law, human rights, and freedom, the activities of these alleged Chinese agents are clearly against U.S. law. Its significance, I believe, is firstly in defending U.S. rule of law, and secondly, it supports the cause of democracy and freedom in China. These U.S. prosecutions also highlight the extent of the CCP's transnational repression and the resources expended to suppress overseas activists and human rights defenders. Liangji noted, it damages the cause of freedom and democracy in China because if people inside the country can't act, and those abroad are suppressed in this way, it ensures the CCP's authoritarian rule continues indefinitely. Moreover, it severely harms U.S. interests. Matthew Olson, the U.S. Department of Justice's top national security official and assistant attorney general, stated that the prosecutions are not only to hold the harassers accountable but also to send a message that from the perspective of U.S. sovereignty and defending American values, freedom of speech and freedom of association, these actions are unacceptable. Ukrainian president's term nears end, Kiev, Russia weaponizes TikTok. Andriy Kovalenko, a senior Ukrainian official responsible for combating wartime disinformation from Russia, stated that Russia has utilized a large number of influencers and bots on TikTok to spread a series of viral videos. These videos are timed to premiere on May 20, the day President Zelensky's first term ends. In November 2023, the Ukrainian parliament agreed to enact a special law deciding that the first post-war elections would be held within six months after the lifting of martial law. After Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Zelensky immediately declared martial law and a mobilization order. Kovalenko said during an interview with Bloomberg in Kiev, Russia dominates TikTok in terms of operational scale. The Russians have been systematically working on TikTok and have successfully utilized the platform for propaganda. According to Bloomberg, TikTok, a social media application owned by Beijing-based ByteDance, is part of Russia's arsenal, which also includes other platforms like Telegram and X. As Ukraine voices its criticisms, concerns about data security and misinformation from TikTok are growing, putting the app under increasing pressure in the US and the European Union. Kovalenko remarked on Russia's proficiency in manipulating TikTok. He explained that they create fake accounts using Ukrainian SIM cards or use geolocation technology to appear as if they are in Ukraine, and they can manipulate TikTok's algorithms to reach a broader audience. Kovalenko noted that after Ukraine complained to its representatives in the EU, TikTok blocked 24 pro-Russian channels. 
Sino-French summit exposes deep divides and rising tensions in China-EU relations. French President Emmanuel Macron's recent meetings with Chinese leader Xi Jinping underscored the ongoing tensions and lack of consensus in China-EU relations. Over two days of talks, Macron and Xi failed to bridge significant gaps on various economic, security, and human rights issues, highlighting a continuing divergence in their international strategies. The Sino-French summit consisted of multiple sessions, including tripartite talks involving European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Despite the discussions, there were no major breakthroughs, with both leaders largely maintaining their established positions. The talks did not address key disagreements, leaving major issues unresolved. Macron aimed to persuade China to reduce the trade imbalance with Europe and refrain from providing military support to Russia. However, the outcomes of these discussions remain unclear, with the global community watching closely. Macron emphasized the importance of fair trade practices and the need for China to engage in equitable competition, aligning with European standards on tariffs and subsidies. Ximin Chen, associate professor of political science, provided insights into the discussions, stating, both leaders essentially talked past each other without reaching any substantive consensus. This situation underscores the ongoing challenges and the intricate dynamics that characterize China-EU relations today. Xi Jinping appeared dismissive of European concerns regarding trade practices and China's overcapacity issues. This stance has been a point of contention, as the EU has previously initiated anti-dumping investigations against Chinese subsidies to various industries. Moreover, Xi's promises regarding non-support to Russia with military supplies are viewed skeptically by many, given the ongoing evidence of Chinese materials in Russian military productions. Political analyst Chen further remarked, Xi's promises are seen by many as insincere, given the tangible evidence of Chinese materials in Russian military productions. Human rights also featured prominently in the discussions, particularly with Xi's visit being met with protests by Tibetan, Uyghur, and Hong Konger activists in France. Rong Wei Lai, executive director of the Taiwan Inspirational Association noted, these protests are a stark reminder of the unresolved human rights abuses and the ethical dilemmas facing European policymakers. Throughout the talks, Macron sought to present France and Europe as autonomous actors on the global stage, independent of the U.S. However, his efforts to engage with China are complicated by the geopolitical landscape, including the war in Ukraine and concerns over China's neutrality claim. Wu Setsi, a policy advisor at a Taiwanese think tank, expressed concerns about the future, saying, the unresolved issues at the summit reflect profound challenges that are not amenable to quick diplomatic fixes. This situation calls for a more strategic and perhaps more assertive European stance towards China. The summit concluded with several preliminary agreements between Chinese and French companies, mainly extending existing collaborations without any significant new deals. This outcome reflects the cautious approach both sides are taking amidst the unresolved tensions. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.